One of the biggest complaints about the Mercer mess is the timing of those traffic signals. But it's not just limited to Mercer. In fact, the nation as a whole gets a grade of D plus when it comes to timing stoplights. Tonight, King 5's Jill Fryer shows us how new smart signals are starting to reduce gridlock. In a perfect world, you would hit every green light. Unfortunately, we live in a go and stop world. A lot of reds. Filled with red lights. Reds all the time. Red faces. The lights aren't synced. It's not timed well at all. While it's easy to complain about the lack of green, it's hard to actually time the lights. Just ask Brian Kemper, who oversees all 1,060 of Seattle's signals, and despite what you might think, likes doling out green time. Try to get them through a series of green lights in a row without stopping is, is the basic strategy. So how are the lights timed? Well, in downtown Seattle, the timing is fixed. There are no sensors to detect cars. The lights simply run on a program timer based on the time of day. And pedestrians get a walk signal at every cycle without needing to push a button. And the reason is there's a lot of pedestrians. As you move out of downtown, Seattle signals react more to what's actually happening. Pedestrians must push a button to get a walk sign, and sensors beneath the road are counting cars, determining whether green lights should be longer or shorter. But no signals in Seattle are as nimble and responsive as the new ones in Bellevue. We're going to take what we have and run it more efficiently. We know that that's a big part of the solution. Three years ago, Bellevue became the first Washington city to start installing adaptive traffic lights. Put simply, the sensors beneath these circles count the number of cars that go through a green light during each cycle. Electronic equipment at the intersection then sends that information to a city hall computer, which crunches the numbers and creates a new timing plan each and every cycle. If it sees a lot of green time in lanes that aren't being used, It'll take that time away the next cycle. And give it to lanes that could use a little more time. And so that's what we're trying to do is just not have any wasted green time and, and be the most efficient we can. The six year citywide transition is costing about $4 million and appears to be worth the investment. It's making a huge difference. Along the heart of Northeast 8th Street, afternoon travel times are down about 40%. On busy Factoria Boulevard, the evening commute dropped by 36%. Traffic seems to be flowing faster. Chris Hunt has certainly noticed a decrease in his red time while leaving work. Well, there's not as many cars waiting in line to get out. <laughs> Seattle has no adaptive lights, but could start introducing them in a few spots soon. One benefit is not having to retime lights as often. Ideally, Seattle would retime lights every three years, but right now it takes longer, five to six years for most signals because resources are so tight. We know that we can use some more staff to do this, and we're going to do the best we can. This is all part of a wish list. Past Seattle mayors found political capital in traffic lights. Paul Shell ran on a signal syncing platform. If we could send somebody to the moon, we certainly ought to be able to synchronize our traffic lights. We all have trips that need to be taken. And Greg Nichols spent 300000 to sync every downtown light. We're making a commitment to make that travel as fast and efficient as we possibly can. But experts say budgets for many cities have changed since then. And so you've got to find places to cut. And so traffic signal retiming work can be one of those things that gets cut. Today, Seattle is using other traffic tools, including special signals that give buses a green light before other cars. If you are trying to encourage people to ride the bus, you want the bus to go as quickly as possible because a, a full bus takes you know, 30, 40 cars off the road. And in Bellevue, these flashing yellow arrows are becoming more common. It's a big difference. Giving Chris Hunt more chance to turn left instead of sitting at a red. Good move. Thanks, Bellevue. <laughs> no technology can guarantee a red-free ride, but every minute counts in a congested world. Joe Fryer, King 5 News. A few years ago, Seattle started installing what are called responsive lights along six corridors. Those lights do a good job of responding to actual traffic conditions. But Seattle plans to start installing those adaptive lights in a couple of years. Mercer is a possible candidate, but first they'll go along Alaskan Way.